Hello and welcome everyone to the Northern Virginia Transportation Authority's Innovation Lunch and Learn series. I'm so glad to see you all here. Thank you for joining us. My name is Mackenzie Love and I'm the staff lead for NVTA's Transportation Technology Committee and I'll be your host and moderator for today's event. This series was designed to create opportunities for pragmatic information exchange about technologies that will be feasible in our region in the next one to five years. And all of the topics that we cover in this series are supported by our Transportation Technology Strategic Plan, or TTSP. The TTSP was designed to proactively prepare for innovations and try to maximize those benefits and minimize any potential negatives. The eight strategies and action plans that originally comprised it were adopted by the authority in May of 2021, and the first substantive updates to the plan were approved as it's a living document in November of 2022. That uh, update included the expansion of scope of two existing strategies and the addition of a ninth strategy. And today's topic, which is best practices for ITS or intelligent transportation systems, is related to several of those strategies but most prominently strategy number six, which is to maximize the potential for our physical and communication infrastructure to serve existing and emerging modes. And strategy number seven, which is to enhance regional coordination and encourage interoperability in the transportation system. Now, if you are like me, that is a very exciting topic and you're ready to get started, but I do have a couple of housekeeping notes I'd like to make for you before we get to it. First is we'll ask you to keep your microphones muted throughout the presentation, but please note that we will have time to ask verbal questions and have more of a discussion after the presentation has been completed. In the meantime, go ahead and put any questions that you have uh, in text in the chat box in the Zoom platform. I will be monitoring those and sharing them with our speaker at, in the Q&A session after the presentation have concluded. Similarly, if you run into any technical difficulties, please pop those in the chat as well, and my colleague Ian Newman will be able to help you. But now, without further ado, I would like to introduce our speaker for today, Mr. Ryan Knight. He is the Chief of the Transportation Engineering Division of the City of Alexandria's Department of Transportation and Environmental Services. Ryan, thank you for being with us today, and I'll hand it over to you. All right, thank you, Mackenzie. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Ryan Knight. Uh, I'm the city's Alexandria Tra Transportation Engineering Division Chief. Today, I will discuss Alexandria's experience with implementing ITS projects and special considerations of those projects. I will go into detail with one project in which we partnered with NVTA, and I will discuss other ITS projects uh, that helped uh, set the stage for other projects. Next slide, please. Sorry, the other one, previous slide, thank you. Again, during this presentation, I will detail the project and its scope and purpose, discuss project promotion and community interests, introduce, challenge, introduce challenges we face and lessons learned to take away from, as well as mention other projects that were uh, related. Next slide. The ITS project in which we partnered with NBTA installed Transit Signal Priority, or TSP, and emergency vehicle equipment along two of our major corridors. What is TSP in preemption? That it allows vehicles such as buses, fire trucks, and other emergency vehicles to get through the signalized intersection quicker by alerting the signal they are approaching. The signal either stays green longer or can call, green, can call the green light sooner if red. Next slide, please. Alexandria has focused on ITS projects as a way to mitigate congestion and attract our residents to other modes of travel. The purpose of the project was to improve on-time performance and buses working towards increasing reliability, make public transit more of an attractive option for Alexandria residents, be consistent with Alexandria's sustainability goals, and improve emergency vehicle response and routing times. Next slide. The scope of, of this project included installing TSP equipment along the King Street Corridor or Route 7 between Dawes Avenue and Quaker Lane and uh, 
install TSP equipment along Duke Street, Route 236, between Walker Street and Telegraph Road. In addition, we provided 30 in-vehicle preemption emitters for emergency vehicles. The project was completed in early 2021. Next slide. Here's a map of the intersection's locations depicted in red. Duke Street is the major road on the bottom of the map, and King Street is at the top of the map running diagonally. Next slide. When implementing this project, we had to keep in mind our two main bus operators in the city, WMATA and DASH. When developing a scope, it was understood that we had to include equipment for different forms of TSP. WMATA uses cellular communication for their TSP. DASH uses GPS communication. The scope included interlight traffic controller, phase selector, cellular modem, and antenna as well as a GPS radio and receiver. Additionally, we included 30 in-vehicle emergency transmitters. Next slide. Just to go a little more in detail of the DASH operation, as shown in the illustration, the bus location, speed, and heading time is stored in a GPS control unit on the bus. The GPS satellite captures this information and notifies the signal once the bus coordinates are within it a set per parameter based on the distance between the GPS antenna on the bus and the GPS radio receiver on the signal pole or a cabinet. Once the bus locations, speed, and heading are within the set parameter, a request is replaced to the signal controller through the phase selector. This request either extends the green time or has the phase come sooner. Next slide. Through this illustration, you see where WMATA's operations are similar and where they are different. A call is placed from the bus with some trigger through a cellular network to the traffic controller. This includes communication to the cellular antenna on the cabinet, to the cellular modem in the cabinet, to the phase selector to the controller. The system is monitored through a central management software or CMS. Next slide. So with this project, we were able to add our TS to our TSP network. As you may be able to tell, we have some type of TSP or preemption capabilities on all our major corridors throughout the city. Next slide. Unlike other, Unlike trans other transportation. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> hearing uh, hearing uh, feedback. feedback. All right, I'll go ahead and begin. Unlike other transportation projects, this project was not tangible. People couldn't see the impacts or benefit of this project. So how do we get people excited about this project? How do we educate people of the capabilities and benefit? So what we did, well, we teamed up with our communications team and put a plan together to advertise through informational video on a website and through social media. We also held a ribbon cutting event for the project to get people excited. So the first video is gonna be kind of an informational video of, of what TSP is. So if you don't mind playing the first video. Wouldn't it be great if you could spend less time commuting? Imagine technology that allows buses to get through traffic signals faster. The city of Alexandria, along with the Northern Virginia Transportation Authority, has made that possible by implementing transit signal priority projects this new smart technology alerts traffic signals when buses are approaching. As the bus approaches, the signal duration adjusts accordingly by shortening a red light or staying green longer. The goal is to keep buses on schedule, improve travel times, and make buses an even more efficient and enjoyable transit option. Projects like this demonstrate the City of Alexandria and the Northern Virginia Transportation Authority's commitment to provide better travel choices, improve commuters' quality of life by spending less time in traffic, and foster sustainability. And this is just the beginning. The City's goal is to build a premier regional transit system that's accessible to all and gets you to your destination faster. We hope to see you on board soon for a faster and smoother commute. Contact us to learn more. All right, 
it. Thank you. And then uh, playing the second video, which shows the ribbon cutting ceremony. We're just going to fast forward to the actual ribbon cutting. I didn't put this project on the ground. Thank you. And if that doesn't get you excited about TSP, I don't know what will. <laughs> uh, next slide, please. So since the project's completion in early 2021, I will admit our experience hasn't been all sunshine and roses. We've had some challenges or growing pains since implementing. For those challenges, we've had to learn and adjust accordingly to make the system better and provide the service uh, be best service to our residents. First thing to point out, obviously, we are dealing with two different bus, operate, bus operators with different TSP systems, cellular versus uh, GS, uh, GPS. So coordination has been key. This includes discussion regarding best equipment location for each system, existing cabinet space and capabilities, as well as priority whenever a call is placed. Another challenge, as the city is playing a third uh, party role in the system, we have no way of monitoring or evaluating the system. Considering Alexandria owns and maintains its own signals, we are essentially responsible for maintenance and installation of the equipment. However, we have no idea when the equipment experiences a malfunction or requires maintenance. We don't have access to any platform that would indicate there, when there is a problem. We have had to depend on Dash or Ramada reporting the issue, which is challenging in itself if the actual signal is working. We worked with Ramada to monitor the, their equipment. However, a select few of us have this access. Whenever we, uh, sorry, go to the next slide. Uh, yes. Whenever we determine maintenance is required, our signal crew has not been adequately trained. There has been instances where either the TSP equipment malfunctions or creates a malfunction to the signal, and the only solution has been to disable or remove the TSP equipment. We would then wait for the representatives from the manufacturers to in assist in reconfiguring or reinstallation. Re Next slide, please. As mentioned, at times, the TSP equipment caused signal malfunction whenever a call is made. We experienced some signals that either went in flash for whatever reason or acted, acted as if the TSP was being called every cycle. So without proper training, our crew either disabled or removed the equipment. However, we are coordinating with WMATA and the manufacturers to set up training for our equipment we have thus far and other projects that require TSP equipment, we are including training opportunities in the scoping moving forward. We've also learned that TSP at times is not the best option depending on the intersection and location. TSP works best with the series of intersections where buses, bus is primarily in the through movement and the bus stops are closely, are, aren't closely spaced. Q jumps may be a better option if a turn lane with low volume exists and if the bus turns onto another street or another major corridor. We have also dealt with changing bus routes or schedules. Luckily, thus far, it has not resulted in a significant change or adjustment to the TSP equipment. However, there are some intersections with, within the city that the TSP equipment may not be activated or useful given the existing bus routes or systems. And just like anything uh, in the technology space, the TSP equipment is subject to upgrades and being outdated. So we are currently coming up with plans to determine an upgrade uh, plan uh, whenever an upgrade is required. Next slide. One of the reasons I'm proud of this uh, project is that it set the stage for other projects and efforts. 
Projects such as the Duke Street in Motion Project. The city has been awarded $87 million for planning, design, and construction for a transitway along Duke Street. The same corridor in which the implement, we implemented TSP uh, through the, the other projects. The transitway would consist of a mix of curb running dedicated bus travel lanes, center running dedicated bus travel lanes, or mixed travel uh, traffic bus facilities. We are currently starting design phase and working towards construction in early 2027. Next slide. Another city ITS project along Duke Street Corridor is the adaptive signal control. This project allows the signal to respond and adapt to real-time vehicle location and movement, movement data, optimize traffic flow, decrease delays, and reduce stops. So instead of a signal depending on timing plans based on time of days, it could adjust itself based on the demand. With this project, we are updating the controllers and ensuring that we have fiber communication from our signals to our trans tra traffic management center. Next slide. Since our TSP implementation, WMATA has undergone a complete review and update of their TSP system. We were, a we were able to co coordinate and collaborate with any upgrades within the city. WMATA is working towards a cloud-based platform. This means the bus integrated vehicle system would send a request to the cloud, then the re request would go directly to the controller. The cloud allows users to monitor and evaluate, evaluate operations. This also gives flexibility to who and how many users could access this platform. Next slide. WMATA has also conducted TSP performance analysis at 16 intersections along Duke Street. They compared bus operations with and without TSP to determine the impacts or, or success rate of TSP. They collected the data while the TSP was functional and while the TSP was disabled. This, on, this also impacted Dash's TSP as well. We're still awaiting results for that. Next slide. So, as we move forward, we will continue to work with both of our bus operators agent, uh, on the pending performance analysis and determine if any adjustments are necessary. We will also determine the best approach to monitor and evaluate the system via dashboards or other platforms. We will involve our traffic operations team every step of the way and provide them necessary tools to maintain and operate the TSP equipment and continue to collaborate with other agencies to develop plans, projects, or strategies to make regional travel using transit more attractive. Ensure all future projects move that much closer to the city's Alexandria ITS visions and goals. Next slide. With that, I thank you for your time and I'm happy to answer any questions as time allows. If, run, if we run out of time, please feel free to contact me as my contact information is shown. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. That was a, a wonderful presentation with so much detail. And we really appreciate you sharing your expertise with all of us. Uh, before we jump into questions from everyone on the line today, I actually have a question for you all uh, through a live poll. So, there is now a poll on your screen. If you're in attendance and able to answer, uh, please do so. The question is, what is the most important to you when considering ITS as a potential solution to transportation challenges? And uh, there are several options up on your screen um, and we'll wait a few moments for those to come in and then I'll share the results with you live. If you're not able to see the polling question, there should be a button at the bottom of your screen with three dots. If you click on that, there should be a menu that will allow you to open the poll. So give everybody just another minute or so here. I know there's a lot to reflect on with the many different uses that uh, Ryan described in his presentation today. Okay, let me share the results with you. 
So it looks like most of you are interested in everything ITS has to offer, and that's uh, great that we have such a um, experienced and well-versed speaker here to answer some of your questions. Uh, improved transit service seemed to be the next option, um, which is a you know, a great match with the experience that Alexandria does have. So with that, I'd like to go ahead and open uh, the floor to your questions. If you have any uh, questions you'd like me to ask, please put them in the chat box and I'd be happy to share those. Or you can uh, raise your virtual hand and we will, uh, you can ask those verbally yourself. We did receive one question in advance, Ryan, uh, and it was, what are some federal or state policies or regulations that are impacting TSP or ITS in general? Are there any that you're aware of that people need to have in mind? Not that I'm aware of. Um, we pretty much all our ITS projects or TSP projects have been uh, regionally um, funded or locally funded. Um, so I'm not sure about the state or federal level. Um, not to not too keen on that or not too uh, familiar with that. Um, great. Well, I, I have a question for you. I mentioned earlier that ITS and all of the projects you mentioned today are relevant to some of the strategies in our transportation technology strategic plan. One of those is uh, strategy number seven that addresses regional coordination and interoperability. And you talked a little bit about the the differences between the DASH system and the WMATA system. Could you talk a little bit about how those um, how those connect with each other on the back end and any, any best practices that you have for maybe laying the groundwork to make those connections uh, feasible when, when you're starting off in a project like this? Sure, so uh, just kind of give more background. Obviously, WMATA, uh, um, you know, provides transit, um, uh, operation regionally, and our and Dash is more of our local um, operators. So they only stay within the confines of city of Alexandria. Now, um, with that being said, uh, there's a lot of obviously they have to go through several of the same intersections. There's a lot of overlap with the uh, routes and and um, and bus stops and things of that nature. Um, so really have to kind of coordinate with them and collaborate with each of the, uh, those entities uh, to provide the best services, whether that means, um, you know, again, you know, talking about TSP um, function, functionality, uh, you know, whether, you know, if, if, if uh, TSP equipment is working or not, um, have to provide the same, uh, the same uh, service or the same amount of service that we do with one entity with the other. So really have to collaborate with each other to determine what's the best uh, way to go about some of these ITS projects or TSP projects um, with uh, either laying the groundwork with some of these, uh, uh, the scope of some of these projects to, to say that, hey, we've got to make sure that uh, this addresses our needs and this uh, conforms with our system. Um, or just kind of a basic collaboration as to, to what is in the future and what the future bus routes look like and if there's any changes to that. So, um, so yeah, there, there's, very, there's a lot of coordination and uh, collaboration between each of our uh, entities. Great, thank you. And uh, folks, I encourage you to keep putting your questions in the chat. Um, Ryan, in terms of those two different systems, you have both cellular uh, cellular network uh, being used as well as GPS. Has there been any um, differences in the operations there? Are they impacted differently by incidents or emergency management situations, um, or do they function similarly across both platforms? They function similarly uh, uh, against uh, all platforms. I will say that our emergency vehicles uh, uh, are GPS based, so they're similar to to Dash. So um, they're GPS based, and however, one of the uh, benefits of a cellular uh, uh, based or cellular system is that uh, it requires a CMS or a central management service. 
uh, or um, yeah, central management service. So, um, so we could uh, uh, monitor and evaluate the, the TSP, the equipment and the operations through that. Uh, we don't have that system in a GPS-based uh, uh, you know, system. Oh, yeah, we don't have that in the GPS uh, system. So, so that's uh, a few of the differences with that. Uh, but um, with any, any input within the intersection, uh, emergency vehicles takes a uh, higher priority. So, um, you know, if a, a WMATA bus, a DASH bus, and a fire truck come at the very same time, in different uh, in different approaches, then the fire trucks takes uh, higher priority. Great, that's uh, that's interesting. Those nuanced differences there are so important. Um, thank you. We did receive a question uh, from Keith Jasper. Do you have any feedback on emergency preemption devices? You spoke a little bit about how they will take uh, priority going through the intersections. Was there anything else that folks need to keep in mind when considering the, the emergency context? Um, the the thing that to consider about the preemption uh, emitters or some of the uh, preemption equipment is that it is configured to have uh, those emitters um, called uh, make the call to the signal. Uh, what we've heard from our uh, emergency emergency response team is that there's sometimes the difficulties and, and it's more of a lack of training and lack of awareness as uh, some, some emitters are more prone to make a call at certain intersections because they're, they're configured for those intersections and not configured for other intersections. So, um, so I think before putting it, before installing it in the, um, in the, in the, um, in the trucks or in the vehicles, in the emergency vehicles, make sure that it's, re that it's configured uh, appropriately so that it makes the call to the, uh, to the signal. Great. So that seems to be a common theme among all of these technologies is making sure the staff that engage with them are trained um, appropriately. And that's certainly got to have a, a learning curve. Could you speak a little bit about uh, what types, what types of positions uh, folks should be thinking about? Um, are you talking about maintainers, operators, all of the above, uh, your ITS staff? What, what kind of things should people think about? Yeah, sure. Um, the people that touch it the most, honestly, is our technicians, our signal technicians. So the people that uh, actually go out into the cabinet, open it up, and then uh, uh, maintain and and make sure everything's operational. Um, if they if those uh, staff don't don't have any training to what uh, the, this new technology or this new equipment is and how to um, how to maintain it and how to uh, you know, troubleshoot it and things of that nature, then they're just going to kind of resort to what they know before, which is this is a new, this is something new. This is probably the reason why something's going wrong with this. So what do I do? I just take it out and everything uh, works back to normal, which again, you know, to, to them, you know, uh, to their credit, they're trying to fix a problem as fast as possible. Um, so that's kind of the first uh uh, take that they have is that, okay, I, I just need to disable this thing and everything will work out fine. However, that kind of uh, defeats the purpose of, of what we're trying to do, which is uh, provide better services for the for the bus uh, uh, system. So, so yeah, we really need to, um, uh, I think training is key to, you know, training our technicians is key uh, on, on the other end of the spectrum. Uh, uh, staff such as myself or or other um, engineers or other planners that that's uh, planning this uh, these types of projects. Uh, like I said, um, monitoring and evaluation uh, is key as well. So training uh, training staff as myself uh, on how to use uh, central management uh, center or or uh, central management system. Um, you know, and how to to read things and how to make sure that things are working smoothly and and what's a sign that uh, they're not working smoothly. Um, so so yeah, training across the board is definitely key to to a lot of these projects. Thank you for elaborating. We have another question from Anne McGrain. 
Does WMATA and or DASH help fund the ongoing maintenance of the system? Or is basically the transit agency, um, the transit agency maintain what's on its buses and Alexandria maintains the signals? Uh, the latter. Except so that, yes, okay. it, it's, um, it's, they fund and they maintain and they provide the, the equipment needed for their buses. And uh, they, pro they provide us information or they kind of give us direction as to what is needed in the signal. And then we uh, maintain and operate and, and fund what is needed in the signal as well. Uh, it's definitely a partnership. Um, I will say that um, we are in constant uh, coordination and constant communication with either uh, agency. Um, so it's definitely a partnership, but, um, and, and I will say that's for, uh, that's in particular for DASH. Uh, for WMATA, uh, again, you know, I, I mentioned it in my presentation, WMATA just went under a, a huge kind of TSP uh, undertaking and in upgrading their system. In that, in that uh, project, they did provide the, the necessary equipment in the signal and they did provide um, our um, technicians, uh, I guess, they, they collaborated with our technicians to install the actual signal that they provided. So within a certain project, particularly that project that they worked on, uh, they were able to, to provide that and, and uh, um, fund that for us. But normally, yes, we, we are uh, responsible and uh, fund our, uh, our own system. Thank you. Um, and with oh, another question has come through, what are some of the pros and cons between the cellular and GPS based TPS systems? I know you touched on the ability to monitor uh, monitor the system through the TPS because of that, uh, because of the CMS, Ooh, so many acronyms to monitor the transit signal priority through the uh, central maintenance system uh, that is available um, there, which is not present on GPS, but are there any other differences? Um, so yeah, that's the that's the larger difference uh, as far as the system is. Uh, the cellular uh, system you are able to um, monitor through a CMS uh, cent central management uh, system, um, and GPS you aren't. I will say that um, you know from a financial standpoint, GPS is uh, a lot cheaper than cellular. Cellular you uh, essentially pay. Uh, it's, it's essentially like paying a phone bill every month. So you're paying for that. Uh, um, equipment, you're paying for that, uh, you know, service uh, every, on a monthly basis or annual basis or however the contract is worked out. With GPS, you just install the equipment and then you're done with it. Uh, so, um, so that that's kind of uh, the, the two uh, bigger uh, differences in, in each of them. Okay, thank you. Um, and so you have two systems operating within your, your jurisdiction, but could you, we just got a question about uh, crossing jurisdictional boundaries. Could you speak a little bit about um, any of that that's happening currently? And are there any difficulties in making those boundary transitions or any perhaps benefits of, of coordinating across lines in that manner? Yeah, so um, I will say that I'm not sure if other localities or other uh, jurisdictions are suffering from the same thing that we are with two different systems. Uh, um, for, for whatever reason, uh, that, uh, that's kind of beyond me that uh, Dash started off with the GPS system and just kind of hasn't uh, tr fully transitioned or hasn't even thought of, of changing that system. So, and I, I know Ramada again, just recently went through uh, uh, effort to reevaluate their system and, and ultimately came up with cellular is the best uh, the best way to go about it. So it doesn't seem like uh, Wamad is changing their system and it doesn't seem like Dash is changing their system anytime soon. So uh, we're kind of um, stuck with two two different systems. Now that's that's for city of Alexandria. I'm not sure if that's the same for other jurisdictions or other uh, management. But again, you know our regional partner Wamada or Metro. Um, they use the cellular system. So I would imagine that our regional uh, um, you know, partners such as Arlington or, or DC or, or uh, Fairfax County or Loudoun County, um, they uh, have the, uh, the cellular um, system as well because of, because of WMATA. 
Um, I, we haven't heard of any uh, disruptions or, or anything like that between jurisdictions uh, because of that. Um, and I think that's a, that's a good indication from WMATA's part in, in making sure that there's not a, uh, too much of a disruption. Um, but, but yeah, it, it's, um, it takes a lot of coordination and uh, collaboration and a lot of effort to, to uh, make this partnership work and, and to really provide the best service that we can provide. Right, that, that kind of um, multi-jurisdictional coordination is always uh, very important to, to NVTA. We try to uh, bring together those partnerships whenever possible. So thank you for sharing a bit more. I think we probably have time for one more question. Um, yes, one more question. Has there been any discussion of using these types of technologies on other fleets, maybe school buses uh, throughout Alexandria? Um. I know there's been discussion in the past and more on the not not school buses, but more on um, uh, other uh, transit. So, um, you know, private transit or, or uh, you know, other services that, you know, that, that have transit uh, service or par paratransit, I could think of as well. Um, so I know there's been conversation with that. Um, the only, the reason why it kind of bogs down is that again, you know, it goes to, you know, providing, providing that, um, that equipment that's necessary on the vehicle, and then also providing that uh, equipment that's necessary in the signal. Uh, we already have two different systems as of right now. I'm not sure if there's a third option, uh, you know, I can't even think of that, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, uh, uh, just providing that uh, service, uh, one of the down, I guess, one of the things to kind of consider when uh, uh, installing more systems is that, uh, again, to talk about priority, you know, who has priority over who and, and what, what happens when one comes uh, at the same time as the other. Uh, like I said, I think uh, emergency vehicles is always going to have, uh, is always going to have top priority, um, but what happens beyond that? So again, you know, with uh, WMATA and Dash, um, it, it's, you know, as of right now, it's first come first serve. So, um, so that's, that's kind of what we're at right now, but um, how, how we adjust that priority and how we uh, adjust the signal timing and what happens with the signals when, whenever it is called um, it would really have to kind of be worked out. And again, all these challenges that we, I, I kind of mentioned in the presentation, you know, we really have to kind of wrap our hands around that before we kind of introduce other uh, users uh, within the system. Sure, that that makes a lot of sense. Um, make sure that it's tried and true, and it looks like you are well on your way to figuring out all of those things. So, um, uh, looking forward to seeing the continued operations in Alexandria. Um, and thank you so much for sharing all of those challenges and also the great opportunities of this project. We really appreciate your time, Ryan, today. Um, and thank you, everyone who is in attendance. Uh, it's great to have you with us. This was the final Lunch and Learn of the summer series of NVTA's Innovation Lunch and Learn um, lunch and learns, but we will be having another season this winter. So please keep your eye out on your emails and on the Driven by Innovation newsletters to get updates about those sessions. In the meantime, you will get a email from me this afternoon with a recording of today's sessions and any materials provided and a survey to fill out uh, your perceptions of today's lunch and learn. Thank you so much for being with us today and I look forward to meeting with you soon in, uh, in another series. Have a great afternoon, everyone. Thank you.